Back in November of 2022, AMD announced their 7000 series GPUs. And with this, they also announced FSR 3.0. I'm excited to show you a preview of a brand new version of Fidelity FX super resolution technology appropriately named FSR3. FSR3, much like Nvidia's DLSS3, uses frame generation to insert fake frames between real frames to try to smooth out gameplay to make it appear like you're getting almost double the frame rate of what you're actually getting. Now this does come with its benefits and its downsides, the latency and the artifacting in the footage. However, it is a very cool technology and might be useful for a lot of people. There's a good reason to believe that FSR 3.0 is going to be launching pretty soon at GDC on March 23rd. That's not completely confirmed, but it's likely that they're going to make a big announcement there. But NVIDIA has already released DLSS 3.0 way back in September of 2022. It really begs the question, is AMD just acting in response to what NVIDIA has done? This question was asked pretty quickly to AMD developers, and they said that FSR 3.0 was not in response to a DLSS. And realistically, if we look at this from a reasonable perspective, that makes sense because this takes a lot of development time. They couldn't just churn out an announcement and a promised release date within a month that NVIDIA launched the DLSS 3.0. That would be silly, but why is AMD always late to things. This is the major problem with FSR 3.0. This is the major problem with AMD's GPU division just as a whole. They always seem to be late to things and not get that initial hype that makes people want to buy their graphics cards. Why would you buy AMD when it doesn't seem like they're the ones that are technologically innovating in this space? Because it's not just FSR 3.0, this runs in the history of Radeon in general. If we look here, this is the DLSS Wikipedia page, and DLSS 1.0 launched in February of 2019. And you compare that to FSR and its release date. I mean, we can see in comparison, which is almost hilarious, FSR 1.0 launched in June of 2021. It, it came out so much later, it's almost ridiculous. And yes, the first generation of both of these technologies weren't that good. DLSS 1.0 wasn't that good and FSR 1.0 wasn't that good. But the fact that Nvidia released theirs so much earlier gave them time that even before FSR 1.0 came out, it already launched DLSS 2.0, which was very, very powerful. And we still use DLSS all the time today. What a great product. It just made AMD be behind NVIDIA. Because it took AMD a lot longer to release its second version of FSR. And it took all the way into May 12th of 2022. Again, two years later than DLSS 2.0 and almost when DLSS 3.0 came out. You can even see when Intel launched their graphics cards, they launched with XESS. They already had a powerful upscaler built into their cards right at launch. And that's huge. FSR and DLSS and XESS aren't the only things to talk about though because AMD was also late to ray tracing. I just recently made a video on ray tracing. It's still not at a point that most people sh really should be using it. However, AMD was late to ray tracing as well because Nvidia's 20 series GPUs came out in September of 2018 while AMD was a whole generation late on this and their 6000 series GPUs came out in November and December of 2018 which is just, again, two years late from AMD. But you know, not everybody uses ray tracing. So let's move on to something else. See, encoding video footage on your GPU basically made NVIDIA the brand that you would go with if you were a content creator. It'd be silly to, to choose AMD because NVIDIA's NVENC encoder has been around for ages already and has just only gotten better over time. Yes. AMD has had encoders on their GPUs for quite a while, but they were never at the forefront of it. Only in this recent 7000 series generation, AMD started to work with OBS directly to really tailor the software so that they get the best results. And now it seems like they're starting to make moves on it, but man, that is like four to six years late. Everybody has been using NVENC pretty much as long as we can remember. That is late. It's been a while, AMD. AMD is always playing catch up and it really sucks because this doesn't even apply to their CPUs. If you notice way back when Ryzen first gen launched from AMD's CPU division, you can see that AMD brought a lot of cores and hyper threading to the average consumer. And just doing that made it 
really, really good product. And First Gen Rising, even though its single core performance wasn't that good, sold really, really well because it was just pushing the technology further than what it was. They weren't playing catch up. They spent development time and actually beat out Intel, especially in a position where Nvidia is like in a position that Intel was in the CPU division. Nvidia is kind of just sitting there. They're raising prices and they're not getting that much more performance per dollar generation on generation. This would be AMD's perfect time to strike. And that's why the 7000 series when it launched was such a disappointment when it did not beat out Nvidia value wise. Although I am in more agreement with how AMD does approach these technologies. This isn't all negative. They are late to this, but what's something that beautiful that AMD does, they make their APIs for the technology open source, which I, I can really get behind. It means that almost any game developer can put FSR in their games. It makes it a lot easier. So that is the give and take. I don't know how much longer it realistically takes to make it open source, but it does take longer when you have to organize a community, make things accessible to people and more user friendly than what Nvidia would ever have to do. Nvidia sticks to the first party things. AMD tries to be all inclusive and let people work with their technologies as well. Very appreciative, honestly. It's almost disappointing how little people have AMD GPUs. The first one is integrated GPUs. And then the RX 580, which is such an old graphics card now, guys. As the RX 4 580 is like six, seven years old. Only 1% of people on the market have it. I want it to be less Nvidia. And then we can see things happen. Imagine if AMD actually launches some technology first. It makes people want to buy their graphics card. That would be huge. Now this does bring up the question, AMD is a public company. So it, it does want to appease its stockholders. They want to see that keep going up and up over time. Taking a risk with the technology is scary on AMD's point, point of view. But if they ever want to do something, they're going to need to do it. Okay, or else nothing's ever going to change. They're always going to be below Nvidia if they keep acting like the way they are. There's also something to think about um, when, because Nvidia has such a large market share. Uh, there's an argument to say that they have to be the ones to do the big technologies because they do have the majority. They have the most GPUs that will support it. So if they introduce ray tracing, that will push the market that most people might want to try ray tracing. And more developers might want to integrate ray tracing into their games. More softwares might want to work with NVIDIA encoders if they have broader support. AMD will never get into a position where they can be the ones to call the shots if they don't take a risk. AMD, come on, man. Do something first. Do something first. I know that's saying a lot. Please. That's all I got for you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.